good evening and welcome to On Time Word Bible Study. I pray that you all are staying safe from this dangerous heat. It's hot. It is hot. I think in my card said today 104. And I know back in uh, Kansas where we're from, uh, I, they said it was like 111. Y'all, it's dangerous heat. So please stay safe. Please stay safe. Please stay in the cool and drink plenty of water so you can stay hydrated. Amen. Well, I am excited for the word on tonight. Um, I got a snippet of it last night um, in conversation with uh, my husband. So I'm ready for the full meal on tonight. I mean, just as he just gave me just bits and pieces. I was like, come on, give me the rest of it. But I'll get the full course meal tonight. So I'm excited for that word. And I hope that you are excited for the word as well. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Apostle North. God is so awesome. He is so wonderful. He is so majestic in all his ways. I give honor to my wife on tonight, everything she does. If you have um, watched our uh, messages on our YouTube channel, um, all, everything that you see on there, she has put together the intro, the ending, the, um, the, the coordination of just everything that's on there. I'm telling God has blessed me with a wonderful, talented, gifted, woman of god and so our youtube page is on fire we've been getting views and comments and messages is being watched and thank you so much for praying for us and and viewing the messages we know they're being blessed we're getting so many wonderful responses from from our youtube viewers um responses from those who follow us on instagram and facebook thank you so much for your prayers and, and your wonderful comments as well and so we getting ready to go into um, this word on tonight. And so um, if you have your Bibles to right with, I'm going to give you um, a few of the verses we're going to talk on tonight. And thank you for those of just that um, joined us on Saturday Restart. Woo, man, what a time I had in Jesus. Uh, if he was on Restart with me um, last Saturday, I hope you had a time with me as well. Man, the Spirit of the Lord came in. I'm telling you, I made literally the Lord re jumped my restart in my spirit. I had a jump start to my spirit. He renewed, revived me, encouraged me on Saturday restart. Oh man, what an awesome prayer, awesome time we had in the Lord. But I just wanted to thank those who joined us on Saturday restart. I mean, Lord encouraging on prayer. He met us on Saturday. So we're looking to go higher on our Saturday restarts. We're looking for more to come in and join us on our Saturday restart. It's corporate. It don't matter where you are, what church you belong to. Uh, we just want to come in and pray for you, encourage you, and give you absolutely a jump start to your work. That's all it's all about. We're here for the kingdom of God. We want to encourage you and pray for you. I'm telling you, God sent prayer on this past Saturday, and boy, did he send a word. Those who will, will be viewing this by YouTube, if you don't know what Restart, Restart, Restart is, it's every third Saturday of the month. Please join us every third Saturday for our Restart. Amen. So now let's get into this word. So I'm going to start with um, the New King James Version in um, John 6 and 35. I'll start there. I'm going to I have quite a few scriptures, and so I'll give you the scripture reference. Um, for you to at least to to take now as your your note, your point of reference. But I will um, read for our foundation for our lesson tonight. I'm going to read um, John six and um, thirty five. All right. So John six and thirty five. This scripture says, and Jesus said unto them, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. So our lesson for tonight is entitled The Broken Bread. So I'm going to tell you now, I don't know if I'm going to finish all of this. I was already in tears and running around the house doing this lesson between last night and today. It may be a part two. I don't know. You know, I have dry wood when it comes to the presence of God and his word. And so when God gave me this title, I just jumped up out of my chair and went around the house a few times. So we're talking about the broken bread. And I almost can stop right there because it's getting good to me already. So y'all pray for me. Whew, thank you, Lord. The broken bread. The appellation that you and all that you and I have, um, it, it's it's a title or description of a personality or or 
our name that we give that we was that we was given when we was born it means something and so appellation is just means name or title and so uh, but I, I, actually appellation also means there's a, a description to our name or there's a meaning um, to the title that we've been given according to our name and so um my actually my name uh latron means to make laugh or joyful and that is the lord having truth i love to laugh i love to make people laugh i love joy i love happy i love to be happy i love to see other people happy i love to see other people laugh i love to see other people full of joy anything other than that is 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 oxymoron of my personality I, if you if i'm doing the opposite of that something is definitely wrong because every day I love to laugh. I love to make people laugh. I'm I just that that's who I'm who I am. And so my name, my affiliation, um, means to to make laugh or or joyful. That's the um, appell appellation rather. I must pronounce the word correctly. Appellation um, for me is to make laugh or joyful. And the appellation of your name it has a it has a meaning. It's it's not just a name, but it's a title. It characterizes your name of who you uh, are, what your personality, what your character represents. That's why the um, appellation of God is many. God has many titles and many names because there is not one name. There is not one adjective that can modify or group or categorize or describe God and his character and his attributes. He's too big. He's too uh, majestic. He's too wonderful. He's, I mean, the name and adjective just go on and on. So there's not one name. There's not an appellation that we can put God in because he's just that marvelous and just that big. There's not one adjective, verb, or noun that can, that can describe God in just, in, in one name, one title. There's not no appellation that can do that. So when I go to Exodus 3 and 13, and actually I'll read verses three through four, chapter three, verses 13 through 14. So it's going to be Exodus three, verses 13 through 14. Then Moses said to God, indeed, when I come to the children of Israel, and so let me just put a pin right here real, real quick. This is when God now has commanded Moses to go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. This is the point in time where the children of Israel has now been bondage uh, for well over 400 years and so now moses is asking god when i go to pharaoh um what do i do when i get there what do i say or what do i do so then moses said to god indeed when i come to the children of israel and and, and say to them the god of your fathers has sent me to you and then they say to me who or what is his name what shall i say to them verse 14 and god said to moses say to them i am who i am and he said thus you shall say to the children of israel i am has sent you and god god told moses just to tell the children of israel and pharaoh the i am has sent me has sent me i am who i am so here god really reintroduces himself to the children of israel because with them being in slavery for 400 something years, they knew God just as El, which was the God, or Elohim, God, or El Shaddai, the God Almighty. But it was title. They titled God as just God, um, um, God Almighty. The, they was just a title. But when God comes to them as I am, God is almost reintroducing himself to them in another way not from a perspective that he's just a god a deity and to be reverenced as almighty or as the god but he's introducing himself to the to the children of israel now as the i am which means when god says tell them i am has has sent you god is saying pretty much that I am all resourceful. I am the source. I am all sufficient. But in other words, God put his step on the stage as the as the um, acidity, acidity, which means God is 
um, the quality or the state of being of, of self origination. I mean, he has no, no dependency upon nobody for his existence. He depends on nothing and anything to continue to exist. He is all self-sufficient in existence all by himself. He's the absolute self-sufficiency. He's the autonomy of himself. Um, God um, exists within his own power, within himself to be self-sufficient with no dependency upon anything, anyone to have the continuation of existence. He is all power of source, but God, that's why God introduced himself to the children of Israel as I am, because he wants to now move them from them, reverence him just as a God. He wants to now move them into relationship. So God gives the children of Israel just a glimpse of another side of him. Oh, help me, Lord. He gives the children of Israel just another glimpse of who he is. Not, not that he is just a God or the God or El Shaddai, El Shaddai, the God Almighty, but he exists as the all-powerful one, the, the one who needs nothing and nobody to, to have him to exist or cause him to exist. And so now God introduces the children of Israel himself to the children of Israel as being all power and being all sourceful, the one who exists by himself. And the reason why God does that is to let the children of Israel know that he has all power. Because if he has the power to exist in himself, by himself, and from himself, then he has the power to do anything else. And, and so God introduces himself to the children of Israel as the I am, as, as the one who needs no help, needs assistance from nobody else. He exists by himself. He is who he is. He is who he say he is. And he needs nobody permissions to, to be God. He has no, he don't need nobody else's authority to be God. He is God all by himself and in himself. So he gives the children of Israel just a glimpse a glimpse of who he is by calling himself I am. Whew. Thank you. I, I just want to I want to stop here and just ask somebody a question. Have you ever called Jesus or called God something else at the time he rescued you? When God intervened in such a way in your life, in whatever situation or circumstance that you was in, and God came in right on time, and he, he showed up right in the nick of time, what did you, did you say, oh, oh, El Shaddai, the great God, God you are, or did you call him, thank you, Jesus? Oh, I'm trying, hallelujah. Did you call him, bless your name, wonderful Savior? Oh, you made a way. God, you came through right on time. His name was, thank you, Jesus. Your, he, you named him, bless your name, God. What, what, whatever you said at the time God gave you a miracle, that's what you called him. That's what you named him. And that's the same thing God was introducing to the children of Israel. He wanted the children of Israel to get to, to get to know him in a different way. Not just God as the supreme being, but as God that now want to move into relationship with them. God wanted them to know I am powerful enough to be God by myself, to let you know I have the I am the source to deliver you. That's why I am. I, I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly all that you need me to do to deliver you out of this situation, out of this set of circumstances. And so God, when God intervened, he just wasn't intervening in your life or in the children of Israel's life just by being God of deity. No, no, he, he God, he gives us a, a peaks and glimpse of, of, of who he is and who he can be to us. I know when God comes through for me, I, I name him, thank you, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. I name him, God, you're so wonderful. Sometimes I name him, God, I don't deserve it. Sometimes I name him, Lord, I'm not even worthy. Oh, hallelujah, the list goes on and on for me. So he's just not this just supreme being, he's father. Oh, he's a way maker, he's a healer. He's a, a doctor in the sick room, a lawyer in the courtroom. That's why even we talked about a few weeks ago, um, Psalms 23, 
where David was in, um, imagining God as his shepherd. But it wasn't just David's imagination to David. God was literally his shepherd. So David, I'm just paraphrasing it. David said, God, to me, you're my shepherd. I call you shepherd. Whew, hallelujah. Glory to God. I call you shepherd. And I, I, in that Bible study, I asked the question, who is God to you? What do you call God? And what what have you named him lately? Have you named him? Thank you, God. Have you have you called him? Lord, you're good. You're wonderful. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you. For, thank you for letting me see another day. Thank you for uh, allowing food to be on my table and clothes on my back and a roof over my head. What have you called him lately? Hallelujah. Because God wants you to know and want us to understand that it's it's more to him than just meet the eye. Mm, 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 mm. It's more to him. That's why God introduced himself to the children of Israel as the I am. I'm just not God. I'm just not a shepherd. I'm just not the healer. It is so much more to him. Guess what? That we have access to. Oh, hallelujah. That's why that's why Jesus, he adds on to this I am. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm trying hard tonight. Jesus himself adds on to the original introduction that God did to the children of Israel in Exodus 3. Jesus adds on to this original introduction. Jesus gives more of insight and more detail of this I am. So now Jesus himself is going to say, hey, I'm getting ready. And I'm getting ready to give y'all a more peek, more of a peek and more of a glimpse on this I am issue. <laughs> when God said, I am, I'm getting ready to give you more details about this I am. Because God, again, God told the children of Israel when he sent Moses, he told Moses just to tell them, I am sent you. I am who I am has sent you. I am who I am. So Jesus now says, let me add on here to what my father was talk about, talking about in Exodus 3 when he said, I am. So and John, like I said, I'm going to try to go through these, but I'm going I'm to give you the scripture where you can go back and find them. In John 8 and 12, Jesus said, uh, uh, then Jesus spoke to them again and saying, I am the light of the world. Oh, oh, oh. oh this is good to me. I'm sorry. I'm happy tonight, y'all. He says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of light. And then, oh, he, he's not done. Jesus is not done. He adds on some more. Jesus said in John 10 and 9, he says, I am the door. <laughs> if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and he will go in and out and find pastures. John 10 and 11, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd who gives his life for his sheep. John 11, 25 and 6. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 11, 25 and 6. Jesus, Jesus said to her, I am the, resur the resurrection and the life. He, he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live again. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. He said, don't you believe this? That's John 11, 25 and 26. John 14 and 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You can't tell me. Is anybody getting a more, little bit more insight, getting a little bit more detail on this I am? Woo, good God Almighty. See, see, God did, God did a, a brief introduction to this I am. But Jesus now, Jesus now is putting on the finished, the finished touches on this I am issue here. God 15 and 5. Jesus says, I am the vine. <laughs> Y'all forgive me, because I feel like preaching on these I am. <laughs> Woo! I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I abide in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do anything. So Jesus said, I'm going to go through these. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the door. 
Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, I am the vine. But now this brings me on to uh, our lesson topic on tonight. John 6 and 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst again. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And so tonight we're talking about the broken bread. In Exodus um, 16, you'll find where the, when the children of Israel was in the wilderness, that was in the desert, you'll find that they was um, um, mur murmuring and complaining about no water, no bread, no meat. And so Jesus, um, so God told um, Moses to prepare the people that in the morning, that there was going to be bread upon the ground in the evening there will be meat so god one evening god rained down quail um and then the next morning god rained down a uh, manna which was which was a sweet, a sweet bread and so god that rained down um bread literally rained down bread from from heaven and so this incident here with god raining down bread from heaven um, in Exodus 16 was a is a shadow of Christ because just like God provided bread for the nourishment of the natural body, Jesus would be the bread for the spiritual body. Lord have mercy. So just like God rained down rank bread from heaven to feed the children of Israel, God sent Himself, sent His Son from heaven to be spiritual nourishment for you and I to be the spiritual food that we that we needed to be redeemed back to the Father, to be the spiritual nourishment that we need. In John 6, 51, Jesus says again, he says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for life of the world. That's John 6 and 51. He says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. So just like God sent, again, just like God sent bread from heaven to feed the children of Israel, Jesus said in here, I'm, I'm, I'm the bread from heaven who's come down to give you life so that you, so you can eat upon my flesh and live. And Luke 22 and 19. Now, if anybody wants to me wants me to recall a certain passage of scripture that I read, please put it in the chat and uh, let me know. And I and I will go over these scriptures again. So I know I'm throwing a lot at you, uh, but for time's sake, I'm just going through them. So if you want these again, just just let me know. I don't mind going back over them. So in Luke 22 and 19, this is when they was um, getting ready to uh, go to the go to the um, Gethsemane, and this was the Last Supper. And so we find um, in Luke 22 19 where Jesus took the bread and gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave and gave it to them, saying, "This is my body, which is given for you." He took the bread and he broke it and said, and gave it to them and said, this is my body, which is given to you. Paul said this way in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four, 24. And when he had given thanks, he had breaking it, breaking the bread. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of me. So, so now, so. I've given you the scriptures where Christ says that he is the bread. Now I've given you scriptures where Jesus is talking about that he is the bread that is like flesh that's going to be broken and given to us. 1 Corinthians 11, 24 says, again, and we have given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, my flesh or my body, which is broken for you, for you, Okay. Now, if we flip back to the old, we'll come to Isaiah 53 and 5. So I gave you John 6, 
51, where he says, I am the bread that came down from heaven. I gave you Luke 22 and 19, where they was um, participating in the Last Supper. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke. And Jesus said, this is my body that I give to you. I gave you 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 11, 24, when Paul said, and when he took the bread, he gave him thanks. He broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. So now Isaiah 53 and 5 is, is, is the prophetic message of scripture that's of what we just read. So what we just read is what Isaiah prophesied years before Christ comes on the scene. So this is Isaiah 53 and 5. It says, but he, now, I got to take a breather right here because this is why I know my preach is going to come, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slow down and really try to teach this part. This makes me happy. Whew. Isaiah 53 and 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Good God Almighty. Help me, Jesus. This is his body that's being prophesied by Isaiah that his body will be broken for you and I. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised. Good God Almighty. I feel you, Robin. Thank you. Mm. He was bruised. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. You don't know how hard I'm trying right now to keep my composure. But he was wounded for my transgressions. I don't know about yours. But he was bruised for all of my shame, iniquity, sins, failures, transgressions, and mistakes. For my peace, he was chastised. And because of the stripes on his back, I am healed. He is the bread that became broken for your transgressions. He's the bread of life that was bruised for your iniquities. He's the bread of life that took chastisement for your peace. And when they whipped him on his back, you became healed. And I, I'm trying to I'm trying to convey this the best that I can without losing it. When Jesus' body was broken, when the first lash of rock and stone went into his flesh, and when they pulled the the, the whip out of his back and opened up his flesh, the door of redemption, the door of salvation. Healing and peace immediately became available. It's not when the Roman soldiers got done beating him. It's when the first wound, the first flesh wound was opened. When his body first became broken in the flesh, we now gain access to everything Jesus became for us to have. If his body was broken for us to receive peace, for him to take on our transgressions and our iniquities and to receive healing, to receive deliverance, what is it that you and I complain about? What is it that we have to worry about? What is it that causes stress and anxiety? If Christ, I'm trying right here, became the broken bread for you and I, why do we fear? Why do we worry? 
Why do we fret? Because his body was broken for you and I to have joy. His body was broken for you all, for you and I to have peace. His body was broken for you and I to have deliverance. His body was broken for you and I to be more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. When he became the broken bread, everything that was forfeited because of sin, we now gain and had access to. When he was the bread that was broken, peace became available, healing became available. So yes, you supposed to be well. He became broken for you to be, uh, to be for you to be good. He became broken for you to be in, to for you to be healed. He came. He became broken for you to have no lack in your life. He became broken for you to have peace and for you to have joy. He became broken for you be, for you to be more than a conqueror in Him. He became broken for for you and I to have access to the kingdom. He became broken for you and I to be redeemed again back into the right fellowship with the Father. And so when situations and, and problems and then these things show up in sickness, illness, and disease, you ought to tell every problem. You ought to tell every pain. You ought to tell every situation. You ought to tell every circumstance. The bread has been broken. Glory to God. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm trying so hard right now. The bread has been broken for me to be set free. The bread has been broken. I, I am. I do not accept depression. I do not accept oppression. I don't accept stress. I don't accept worry because the bread of life has been broken on my behalf. The bread of life has been broken for me to be well. Whew. Thank you. The bread of life eradicates all complaining, all murmuring, all doubt. What is there to doubt? What is there to fear? Why worry? Why, why not have trust? Why not have faith? Because the bread of life has been broken for you to have victory in every area, every aspect, and every arena of your life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I've come to be broken just for you to have everything that you did not have a right to, but I've come to break my flesh. Thank you. I come to, to put myself on a cross for you to have access to everything that you forfeited because of sin. But my body now has been broken for you to receive salvation. My body has been broken for you to receive healing. My body has been broken for you to receive deliverance. My body has been broken for you now to receive a faith that if you tell this mountain to be plucked up and cast into the sea, it has to obey you. Because if you, I, that's why Jesus said in John 16, he said, I, that's why he said, I am the bride. And if you abide in me and I abide in you, you can ask anything. This is not possible unless we take part of the broken bread. Oh, hallelujah. And so, so when we take part of this broken bread, we're saying, God, I believe that your body was broken for me for, 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 for healing, for deliverance, for salvation. And I move forth in faith, knowing that your body was bruised, you was beaten, and a chastisement of my peace was laid upon you. And with your stripes, I have no choice. Oh, somebody ought to proclaim, I have no choice but to be healed. I have no choice but to be well. I have no choice but to be set free because he came and he did. He allowed his flesh to be broken. Woo! Hallelujah. That's why victory has got to be yours. That's why things has got to get better. That's why things has got to turn around. Things has got to improve. You've got to become well. You've got to be healed. You've got to be redeemed. You've got to be restored because his body came to be broken just for that. 
just for you. And I don't know about you, I partake on tonight. Oh, thank you. Oh, hallelujah. I take, I partake in his broken body. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. I partake to receive my joy. I protect and receive my healing, my deliverance. He takes my sin, my shame, my embarrassment. All of that is upon his broken body. And so that's why the Bible says, he who, he, he who was rich became poor. So you the I can become rich because he took on our poverty. He took on sickness. He took on disease. He took on sadness. He took on weakness. He took on uh, iniquity, shame, and reproach. He took on all of that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He took, a, he took on all of that. And so you have no choice but to be free. That's why the scripture says, who the son sets free is free, is free indeed. Hallelujah. So we so we partake of Christ's broken body, the bread that was broken. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which has been broken for you. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. So the next time you get ready to complain about something, you ought to say, but the blood. That's why the old folks say, plead the blood of Jesus. But the blood, the blood, the blood, plead the blood. Hallelujah. Before you, before you try to figure it out and before you try to, to get down and for doubt before doubt try to creep in and before fear try to creep in you ought to say but the broken body hmm. oh but the broken body he's gonna wake up he's gonna make a way he has to make a way because his body was broken for a way to be made hallelujah he healing has to come forth because his body was broken for me to be healed Oh, deliverance has to come forth because his body was broken for me to receive deliverance. And I don't know about you on tonight. Every everything that his body was broken for, I receive it. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Everything that his body was broken for, I receive it on tonight. Hallelujah. I receive it on tonight. I'm telling you, I receive doors to be open. Thank you. I receive windows to be raised on my behalf. I receive the floodgates of heaven coming in, hallelujah, and pouring out blessings where there's not a new room enough to receive it. I receive promotion, increase, and elevation. Everything that the work of the cross has for me, I receive. I know I'm being a little selfish tonight, you, but you can join in. I'm telling you, I receive it. Do you, per, do you partake of this broken body tonight? Oh, that's the question. Hallelujah, because if you do, I'm telling you, when you think about the cross and when you think about his broken body, I'm telling you, it, it, you, it'll keep you from complaining. It'll keep you from doubting. It'll keep you from asking God what's next, because according to his broken body, he already has next. He already has next. It's, it's already done. He's made the way. The way is already made. We thank him and we worship him for the way he's already made because his broken body is the stamp of approval that it's already done. It's already fixed. It's already settled. Now we just proclaim it. We just receive it by faith because his broken body is already proved. It's already done. Hallelujah. Healing is already your portion. Deliverance is already your portion. Joy is already your portion. It's already yours. Hallelujah. We just, you just have to receive it. You receive it. Hallelujah. His body has already been broken. He was nailed to the cross. The thorns was pressed in his head. He was pierced in his side. Hallelujah. He was beat and slapped and spit upon all night long for you to have victory, for you to have joy, for them, for there to be no lack, deficiency in your life. Hallelujah. So you have to, you have to say, it is so. Whatever you believe in God for, you ought to say it is so. Why? Because his broken body is the proof that it is so. Hallelujah. Glory to God. His broken body is the proof that it is so, that it is well. Hallelujah. It is so. Oh, his blood says it's so. I got to go now. 
His blood says so. Hallelujah. His blood says I'm redeemed. His blood says I'm restored. His blood says I am healed. His blood says I am worth it. His blood says I am the head and not the tail. His blood says I'm above and not beneath. His blood says I'm going to make it. His blood says he's giving me strength. His blood says he's turning it around. His blood says he is fixing it. It's getting ready to turn out for my good. It's getting ready to turn out for your good. Why? Because his blood blood says so. His broken body says so. He's the bread of life to come to make a way. He's the bread of life to come to restore. He's the bread of life to come to redeem. He's the bread of life to come to heal. Woo! Glory to God. Oh, I receive it on tonight. I receive this bread on tonight. He come to make a way. He come to restore. He come to set free. Hallelujah. I receive the work of the cross on the night. I told my wife last night, I can't think of a reason to complain because, because victory is mine. Joy is mine. Deliverance is mine because his body was broken for me to have joy. His body was broken for me to have peace. I got peace. Oh, I'm sleeping good tonight. His body was broken for me to sleep good tonight. Woo! Glory to God. His body was broken for me to have an awesome day on the morrow. And when the, even when the enemy comes in like a flood, my Bible tells me that the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him because the broken body of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So when situations and things and problems and circumstance arise, you ought to say, but the broken body of Jesus, but the bread of life, but the broken bread, but the broken bread. That's going to be my response to everything, but the broken bread. The broken bread said so. The broken bread proclaimed. The broken bread did it. Hallelujah. On my behalf. Though the broken bread. What can stand up against the broken bread? That's why God said, tell him I am. I got to go now. I am who I am. Glory to God. Thank you. I am. Tell him I am, sent you. Woo! I am everything that you need. I, I, there, there is no in between. There's no vari variables. I am everything that you need. There's no cracks or crevices. I am everything that you, I am the source. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm grateful he is my everything. I'm so grateful he is my broken bread. Thank you. Hallelujah. He's my broken bread. Oh, that comes to supply every need. Oh, the broken bread supplies every one of your needs. But we have to receive it by faith that he is this broken bread that provides everything that I need. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I'm telling you, I know I'm being a little selfish on tonight, but I'm telling you, I, I, it's like I'm sitting with Jesus and eating bread. Hallelujah. It's like I'm sitting right here with him and eating of his body. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because I, I, want, I want everything that the broken bread did for me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that alleviates complaining. That alleviates worrying. That alleviates doubt. Because if his body was broken, was his body broken? I hope I made that point. I hope you know in the scripture that his body was broken. Hallelujah. The, some people say that with the 39 stripes that he received. It doesn't say in, this, in, the, uh, in the gospel that he received 39 stripes. We get that from, from, from a later, from the New Testament, I think in, in uh I think I can't remember where it was Acts, where one of the apostles received says that he received 39, 39 stripes and saved one. That's where we get that from. But these were these were Roman soldiers. These are Roman soldiers who hated Jews. So do you think Jesus just received 39 stripes? They whipped him until the until one theologian says that his bowels was hanging out. Good God Almighty. You talking about his body being broken. He was halfway dead even before he went to the cross to be nailed to it. And we want to complain and we want to have doubt and we want to wonder why and we want to stress. And we will tell God, where are you? Lord, I don't know. And his body's been broken for you? Good God Almighty. Oh, hallelujah. We're trying to figure out if God's going to make a way. Yeah, he's going to make a way because the way has already been made because his body was broken for a way to be made for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. His body wasn't brutalized and broken and beaten for, for you not to be successful, for you not to make it, for you not to have joy, for you not to have peace, for you not to be more than a, a conqueror. Hallelujah. His body was broken for you to achieve and accomplish and do great things. His body was broken for you to have strength. His body was broken for your faith to, re, to be renewed and refreshed every morning. His body was broken for you to be anointed. 
for you to be a conqueror in Christ Jesus, for you to go forth and do great and mighty things. That's why his body was broken for you. Hallelujah. For us to receive salvation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so we can tell others about Christ, that he is coming back again. He is coming back again. Hallelujah. But, but we want to be the Christians here on earth that shows them the mighty display of the works of Christ. And I, I want to go around and show people the broken bread lives. Mm. The broken bread lives. He lives on the inside of me. The broken bread lives. I can tell you he lives because when I was depressed and when I don't didn't know what to do, when I wanted to give up on life, the broken bread showed up. Has the broken bread showed up for you? Has the broken bread saved you? Has the broken bread made ways for you? Has the broken bread turned things around for you? Hallelujah. Thank God for the broken bread. Thank you, Jesus. Hell, God, just, just like... Just like uh, a meat food is essential to this natural body, the broken bread, him being the word, is essential to this spiritual body. Hallelujah. It's in his word. It's in his word. Everything that the broken bread has provided, it's in his word. That's why Jesus said it is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It's in his word. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you cannot apply God's word and not and not read kingdom benefits it's no way and it's no you cannot apply god's word and not see the word of god manifest in your life hallelujah the broken bread has promised ah, glory the broken bread has promised he has promised he has promised so glory 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 to god so i'm telling let me let this go so i want the only the the, the just of this message for you to know that the, the broken bread he came as the bread of life to this world. He came as the bread of life for this world, for you and I, but he came as the bread of life to be broken. Hallelujah. To be broken just for you, just for you. So so, 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 so you should have joy. You should have peace. You ought to feel right now, you ought to feel like you can just climb up a mountain because, because the broken one, the greater one, lives on the inside of you. Thank God. For him being the broken bread. Oh, thank you. Oh, hallelujah. The broken bread and he who is good that has promised. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The I am. He is the I am. He's everything that we need. And he's the broken bread that has made every pathway straight. That's going to manifest every promise. Everything that's been spoken in your life. Every prophetic word of, that you have received in your life is coming to pass. Because the broken bread has made it possible. Whew. Glory to God. Oh, man. First, come and leave you with this. First Corinthians again, 11 and 24. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Oh, hallelujah. I tried. Woo. It got good to my show. Tried not to preach. But I pray somebody received this word on tonight. And for you to know that the broken bread has done it all for you. And all you got to do is just receive it. And, and when the enemy tries to come in and when doubts try, tries to creep in and when, when problems, situations arise to try to take away your faith, you ought to say, but the broken bread. Woo! Oh, that's a word by itself. But the broken bread. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, God, I can't thank you enough. God, we can't thank you enough. Oh, Lord, for being the bread of life. Oh, God, for saving us, God, for my sin and shame and guilt, Father. Thank you, God, for you being the broken bread that came and rescued us. And God, no, not only have you res rescued us, oh, God, from sin and shame and allowed us, oh, God, to see our day of salvation. But God, you come, oh God, to give us peace. You've come to heal us. You've come, oh God, to be the broken bread, to take away our iniquities and our transgressions. And God, we receive our victory on tonight. We receive our healing on tonight. We receive greater on tonight. God, you was broken for us to be great. You was broken, God, for us to do great things and to go forth and do great exploits. 
Thank you, God, for being our broken prayer, Jesus. Oh, God, we partake of your body. We partake of this broken bread, Jesus. Oh, God, that saves us and that has redeemed us, Father, in the name of Jesus. We have no reason to doubt, fear, or, or to complain, God, because the work is done. The work is finished. That's why you dropped your head in the stock of your shoulders and said, it is finished. Everything we need, God, is in you. Oh, God, your body was broken to be the source of everything that we need. So, God, we receive it on tonight. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being our broken bread, Father. Oh, God, and when we, when we want to doubt, and God, when we get concerned, and when it seems like you're just not working out for our favor and not working out for our good, oh, God, we know what the broken bread has said, and we know what the broken body of you, God, has done for us. So, God, we thank you on tonight. And we receive right now everything, oh God, that your word says that we have, oh God, we receive it. Everything that your word says that we can be, God, we receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you for being the I am. Thank you, God, for being the I am and being the bread of our life. Thank you, God. You feed our souls. You are the word, God, that feeds us. You are the word, God, that sustains us. You are the word that gives us strength. You are the word that feeds our faith. You are the word, God, that feeds our hope. You are the word, God, that keeps us, oh God, oh God, in righteousness and holiness, Father. So we stand firm on the promises, oh God, of your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for your body, oh God, that was broken. For these, your people. And I thank you for everything, oh God, that you have promised, oh God, in their life, oh God, is coming to pass, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, for quick turnarounds, quick answers, God, quick healing, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, deliverance, healing, and restoration is your people's portion, Father, according to your broken body. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. And amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're going to go through just a few announcements for you on tonight. Again, we pray that this uh, this word was was uh, encouraging to you. It was a, an, an inspiration to your soul. I'm telling you, thank you, Lord. Again, thank you for attending our Bible study on tonight. And again, we just thank God for His word, and we just we just bless you in the name of Jesus. And you go go forth. And you can proclaim to every situation, every circumstance, but the broken bread. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. So we love you. I got to let this go. We love you. And, and But I'll, as I always say, God loves you more. The broken bread loves you more. Go forth and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. God bless you. Mm -hmm.